Oh yeah, definitely got to be a little bit careful here with an oyster beds. One wrong step, man, and these things are going to dig holes on your shoes, you know? We got the mighty Hillsboro River right here in downtown Tampa Bay. You guys can see right here the Sheraton Hotel. We got the Bank of America building. Uh, that round, the big uh, side, yeah, whatever that thing is. That's cool, man. Day number, let me see. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Day number five, Champa Bay. Let's get this video started. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing Channel. Now, let me tell you all, ladies and gentlemen. If you follow this YouTube channel, you guys know that Leo Shang here is the urban fishing connoisseur, right? Schoolgirl River in Center City, Philadelphia. We got the Susquehanna River in Harrisburg. I have fished the Ohio, the Monongahela, and the Allegheny in Pittsburgh. Every time I go to a different city out there, not only in Pennsylvania, I tend to really hit the urban watersheds, right? And as I have mentioned in previous videos here on the channel, the recent ones, this river has been kicking my butt for the last few days, right? I have fished the Hillsboro River right here in downtown Tampa, two different spots for the last few days, five hours total, and I have caught only two different species of fish. The Frilfin Gobi, the Batigobius Soporator, and the Southern King Croaker, the Mentecijus Americanus. So I figure, Today is potentially our last day down here of fishing. Man, you gotta show the urban rivers some love, right? I'm going to soak bait here at this particular spot. And hopefully by the end of the day, we're going to have caught more than two different species of fish from this place. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, all those other rivers, I have caught more than two different species of fish when I attempted. So. I'm really hoping that today is going to be the day. I, I am a stubborn fella. I refuse to concede. Let's set up our rods and get the fishing started. One of the first things that really worries me about this particular fishing spot is the tide. As you guys can see, right? This place is tidal. And I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to have this little piece of land all to myself. The thing about this particular river is that the majority of spots in this river are private, very sadly. So, you know, it was tough finding a spot where I could publicly just come and fish. But well, I did get access via this spot, via a street which is public, and I am on the river which is also public, so people can't really kick me out, you know what I'm saying? But if I lose this little land over here, I guess we'll worry about that when the time comes. I was setting up the second camera over here. And we got a hit on the big rod here, man. Let's see if the fish is on. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, boy. Still pulling, still pulling. Fish on. First fish of the day coming up here. Not so sure what it is, man. Hillsboro River, urban. Tampa Bay, boy. Ooh, not bad, bro. He's got some back to it, man. Not bad, not bad, man. I've caught only two different species of fish from this entire river in the past few days. Anything at this point is welcome. Is that a catfish? Well, I tell you what, if it is a catfish, it's going to be my first catfish ever from this river. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a chunky catfish, man. Hardhead sea catfish. The Adiopsis failis, boy. Check this out, huh, fellas? 10 14 a.m. I've been out here only for about 15 minutes. Uh, had a huge hit, missed the fish. Second hit, you know? You know that fish ain't gonna fool me twice. Check it out, check it out. We got here our first species of the day a hardhead sea catfish. Ooh, all right, just went a little bit suicidal on us, you know? The good old Ariopsis Felis, right? My first one ever from the Hillsboro River. I'm not gonna do an underwater release, although I am going in the water, as always. 
cool waters urban tampa bay check it out now oh you're swimming the wrong way buddy <laughs> look at that i finally found its way let me tell you fellas and this is serious serious talk urban rivers usually have a lot to offer and they are usually highly underappreciated as well I bet that the majority of people here who live at Tampa Bay, they don't even know what are the species is swimming in the Hillsborough River, right? And like I said, that was my first one ever. So that makes three different species that I have caught from this river. First one of the day. Oh, look at that hit. Now, is that fish actually on? The line went very slack. Goodness gracious. The line went real, real slack. Did this fish cut me? At the oyster bed? Oh, no, it's on. Oh, hell yeah. You see, there's a bunch of oyster reefs down there. So sometimes when the fish bites, they may cut you right at the oysters. But I think this is another catfish. <laughs> Bit and this one right towards me. Yeah, a smaller one too. But man, I gotta tell this hard head sea catfish, they pull damn good. I'm using my pin is lammer right over here. Salt water set up. And yeah, look at that, huh? Beautiful sample. Swimming right there. Tiny one. Same species, but I mean, you know, at least we got some action going on out here, right? better than the last two days i was out here you know what i'm saying got one bite here one bite there the entire day all right let me land this one all right come over here actually it is quite chunky chunkier than i expected hooked on the side of the mouth look at that huh beautiful hook set not sure if i'm going to need the pliers for this one but let me tell you all hardhead sea catfish you definitely got to be very, very careful with the fins on this particular species of fish, right? Dorsal, pectoral fin. Pectoral and dorsal. Don't let it get, don't let it sting you. Because if it does, let me tell you, it is going to hurt, all right? Okay, this one's going back where it belongs. Gave me a very, very good fight, man. All right, there you go, little caddy. Beautiful creature highly undervalued some people take it as some sort of trash fish aka raw fish but let me tell you the last few days i have spoken to a few locals who fish here in the tampa bay area and believe it or not a lot of the locals they actually depend on this fish and some other species around the area right to pass by i don't know if the economy has been that bad or not but we got a lot of folks down here fishing for some food and this catfish it actually tastes pretty good Holy smokes, I think we just got another hit on this rod here. This rod's been pretty quiet. Oh dude, it is definitely on. It's definitely on. My man, this catfish, if this is a catfish, it's fighting damn good. Boy, it's warm all the way to the left too. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Not even going to sugarcoat it. Schoolgirl River channel catfish fishing you know what i'm saying dictalurus punctatus just that these catfish right here they fight so much better you know oh that's why we got some grass together with the catfish that's why it felt so good yeah look at that my man down the grass off and the catfish is in this is like what third one third one of the day you know hey at least we got something around right it's really the little ones that you have to watch out for little ones got the fins powerful man very powerful the younger it is sharper it is you know what i'm saying well all right that was uh that was a good fight yeah all right going back where it belongs man third catfish of the day always always is swimming the wrong way for some reason yeah, all right. 
It's not bad. Oh, I got one. Finally, I got one. These are tiny mojaras, I think. Micro fishing finally paying off. Man, I've been micro fishing there for about 20 minutes now. Super, super hard to catch this. I don't even know whatever type of mojara these are. Look at this. I mean, whatever this is, guys, you know this one is going live, right? On that big rod. Oh, man, it's got marks on its body, too. Juvenile. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to take photos of this one. This is very, very suspicious. Well, I tell you all what, this is a real difficult mohara to identify. I took a lot of shots of the fish, top of the head. But for now, we're just going to cast the sucker out there. You know what I'm saying? Never know when a little spotted sea trout is going to show up, right? So there we go, man. Make it fly, boys. Oh yeah, right there. It's still about 10 feet. You guys can see the tide is definitely coming in, right? It's getting very close to my raw holder now. Hopefully we're going to get a huge bite on this mohara and it is not going to be a catfish. Oh my goodness, that's on the mohara. Live mohara. That's got to be on the live mohara. Oh, we got off. My goodness. That's on the Mohara. Live Mohara. That's got to be on the live Mohara. Oh, we got off. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. That was on the live Mohara. Yep, 100% live Mohara. 100% live Mohara. Damn, that was not a catfish. Yo, we need. We need to catch another Mohara ASAP. That's where microfishing pays off, you know what I'm saying? You come out here and you may catch some new species microfishing too. And while you do it, if you catch a little Mohara, you can just save it as live bait, cut bait, whatever you want, right? Got a little live well right over here to keep them alive. Man, I got the whole thing worked out. Got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, hell yeah, boy. My crew master, man, that's what they call me. Yeah, look at that perfect bait size too. Another one of those mystery mojaras. Man, you know this is gonna give us a big one. I took the shrimp out because I don't want a catfish to get the shrimp. And then, you know, there's a chance that the mojara is going to get eaten by the catfish. So we got solo mojara now. You know, if we got a hit on this one, man, it's going to be a good fish, you know? Oh, hell yeah, right there. Last one pull drag like crazy. This one, you just never know. Now, is the fish is still on there? I think it's a catfish. Yeah, it feels like it is a catfish. Oh, it's on. On the pink fish. Live pink fish that I caught earlier today. Uh, doesn't feel like it's a big one though. Oh, actually, I may be wrong. Maybe it's a little bit more decent than I thought. Let's see, is it a catfish? Or is it something different? Oh, it's a big catfish, man. I mean, not big at all, but nailed that pink fish. Goodness gracious, another one. Not exactly what we're looking for. I've lost count of how many of these we caught today so far, fellas. I'm still using live bait in hopes that maybe a little schnook or maybe, I don't know, maybe a little sea trout's going to show up. But the catfish have been biting on my mojaras and pinkfishes like crazy. <laughs> At least the spot's been productive so far though. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have gotten a little problem. <laughs> it is currently 1 p.m. And as you guys can see, the tide is getting a little bit too high. I'm actually losing ground over here. And soon this whole area is going to be submerged, right? 
so I will have to be forced to leave the spot. What can I say? I can't really tell you guys that the Hillsborough River sucks because that wouldn't really be the truth, you know? I mean, in this video alone, we've caught like, what, three different species of fish? I mean, sure, nothing too exotic, you know, or nothing too big, but the catfish, whoo! The catfish action has been on fire since the morning. It's been hardhead sea catfish after hardhead sea catfish after catfish and some more catfish, right? So, <laughs> you know, urban fishing at its best, right? Kind of feels like fishing in the Schuylkill River in Philadelphia. The only difference really is that these catfish pull much harder. I will tell you this though, the few days that I've been fishing down here, okay, this is definitely the honey hole, all right? Navionics definitely didn't lie to me. This place is about eight to 10 feet. It is one of the deepest holes around the area. And I tell you what, today is my first time ever hitting this particular spot. I mean, this week, right? It's my first week ever fishing downtown Tampa Bay. But if you were a local, okay, that is all theoretical, and you came down here with a bucket full of live fish or live shrimp, I dare to say you would land some snook over here or some speckled sea trout or some bigger species because I'm telling you, there are some bigger fish down there. That one bite that we got in this video, the big bite, that was no catfish, all right? But that being said, we are going to end this video over here. Okay, it is time for me to go get some lunch. So... I know that you all are pretty disappointed, I, I, believe me, I'm pretty disappointed too. This river has been kicking my butt for the past few days. We will get, we'll eventually get some revenge, you know, sooner or later, mike my words. But for today, that is it. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Tight lines, fellas. I'll see you all next time. I don't want to work with cats and dogs. I, well, you know, at least you got a certification. That's good. That's. Well, I'm also a, uh, a medical insurance bill encoder. I did that too. Wow, I see. I see. Okay. No kidding. Have you ever caught one of these? Well, this is alive too. See that? That's a lightning whelk. Yeah. See that? Unbelievable, huh? You First time for it was hungry. Oh yeah. <laughs> Saw that shrimp down there. Was like, God damn.